I know this. The road I'm on, right now, this was my decision. I look ahead, and I look behind, and all I see is broken landscapes, littered with my bad choices. The truth is, when it comes to my thoughts, and the words I speak, and the actions I take, I am my own worst enemy. I cannot win this war on my own. Every mile along the way, every turn that I take, I will need a strength greater than my own. A guide who sees what I cannot. Someone to take the wheel and show me the way that leads to victory. I once heard Jerry Seinfeld say to a crowd of people that were listening to his jokes, he told them, I could talk to all of you, but I couldn't talk to any one of you. And he was saying, you know, talking to a big crowd is fine, but one-on-one -on -one I would struggle. And I remember hearing that just thinking, man, that explains so much of the angst in my life. It's an ironic thing that I get paid literally as my job to talk to groups of people. And I can talk to thousands of people, 80,000 at a time. But some of the most challenging moments of my life have been talking to just one person. I could talk to all of you, but it's hard for me to talk to just any one of you. And it's funny to think about a battle like that happening all the time. And that kind of battle has popped up throughout my whole life. I remember one specific moment, I was at a networking event. I hate networking events. To me, hell is a cocktail party. Uh, but at this crowded kind of bar restaurant area in a hotel lounge, I remember walking in and just feeling so alone, even though I was surrounded by all these different people. The problem was I didn't know anybody. I looked around and all the sea of faces, it just seemed like they were all strange to me. But eventually I, I, I caught the eye of two people that I knew and I was so excited and relieved and I finally felt like, oh my gosh, there's, there's, there's a moment here in this restaurant where I can belong. So I walked up to these two people and to my delight, they were, hey, they recognized me and invited me over to talk to them. And so I began to just talk to them and all of a sudden I felt just all of my tension and anxiety sort of melt away a little bit because where I had walked in and felt like everyone was looking at me and I felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb and I didn't belong there and I didn't have my people to be with, that we, we, what we all long for. All of a sudden now, once I was with these two, I had an identity. I was a part of this group. I was a part of this moment and it just changed everything. To my horror, a few minutes into the conversation, someone walked into the room that literally Every single person in that whole environment, every single person knew them, knew them well. Every one of you would know this person. He walks into the, 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 the lobby, and like I said, everyone stares at him, and he made a beeline straight for us. For a minute, I was excited. Oh my gosh, now I'm about to be in a moment that's even bigger. It's even better, and I, I'm included. I belong here. To my dismay, he walked up to the two people I was talking to and asked them if he could borrow them for a moment. Didn't say a word to me, but asked these two people that were my security blanket. They were my passport into belonging and into feeling good and feeling accepted and into feeling validated. And he took these two people and he grabbed them by the elbow and he escorted them away from me. And I'm left standing right there completely by myself again, only now it wasn't my imagination. Everyone in the room was looking at me as I'm now the guy who didn't go off in this other conversation. And it was like all my middle school anxiety, all my fears about belonging and being accepted, all these insecurities bubbled up as I stood there literally feeling like I was just rejected and second class and I hadn't been picked for the team and I wasn't at the cool kids table. 
And it was so hard because as I walked away, I was just dealing with all of this red-faced emotion. And I hated how much I cared about how that felt. I don't know on what terms you can relate to that, but I know this, the struggle is most definitely real. Maybe you effortlessly interact with other people and so that's not your particular war of choice, but maybe it's overeating or perhaps it's compulsive spending or you pull your phone out to check it mindlessly without even paying attention to what you're doing. I know this, all of us have a war we are fighting and it's a war we're facing within. The truth is that when it comes to the thoughts that we think, the words that we speak, and the actions that we take, the decisions that fill our days up, we are all in a battle.